So here are some example numbers to determine the error for the ballistic pendulum. And let's say that you measured 15 grams for the pendulum mass, that was the cup you used, plus minus one gram, let's say you were that accurate. I gave you darts that were measured at 1.5 grams with an error of 0.25 grams. I tried to measure that accurately. Um, and then the pendulum length that you have is 55 centimeters and the error that you have in that is one centimeter and then the angle you measured is 13 degrees with a with an error of one degree. Notice that for this one here I set that in the accompanying document that actually you measured the length of the pendulum and the distance by which it went out when it was hit by, by the foam dart and that goes then into the inverse tangent and goes into the cosine and I explained well that is becoming really complicated so let's just assume that we measured the angle directly and we come up with a an error of just one degree okay anyway when you look at these numbers here one divided by 15 is a little bit less than um, 0.1 so a little bit less than 10 percent error so it's actually a relatively large this one here is also relatively large 0.25 divided by 1.5 in fact is a little bit larger than 10 percent error and 1 divided by 55 is about 0.02 so that's only 2 percent and 1 divided by 13 is a little bit less than 10 uh, point 0.1 which is also a little bit less than 0.1 uh, is, yeah a little bit less than 10 percent okay this is the our propagation formula derived from the ballistic pendulum formula where I said in again my accompanying document that as you add these two masses here the foam dart mass in the numerator compared to the pendulum mass is relatively small so let's just look at the mass of the pendulum <laughs> excuse me at the mass of the pendulum in the numerator so that one is being squared here the relative error the percentage error and then from the denominator itself that is being squared here as well just like it says in the websites on the websites that you find on error propagation that I supplied and then we go over here the 2 and the G at 9.82 these are assumed to be exact numbers so of course they don't carry any error then the pendulum length well that's again the relative error and then there's a one half in front of that that's because it's inside the square root and the square root is the same as an exponent one half and again looking at the website supplied for error propagation you see that's what's happening with that one half goes in front of it and then I said something about the error in the angle which is inside the cosine and I and I checked this one here that when you do this here it does become very complicated with calculus but if you there's a way around it and I checked for the angles we come up with that multiply that by two so you just have to take that at face value. Um, I figured that for small angles that's kind of um, how the error propagates with an additional factor of two and then notice there's another factor of one and a half well again that is the square root in here which means actually nothing happens here you know one half times two of course is one. Okay anyway let's do it so mass of the pendulum is one divided by 15 that's the relative or a percentage error for that that's why I said a little bit less than 10 percent so 6.7 percent the mass of the foam dart so 0.25 divided by 1.5 a little bit more than 10 percent so 16.7 percent the length let's see 1 divided by 55 a little bit less than 2 percent 1.8 percent and the angle 1 divided by 13 whoops also a little bit less than 10 percent 7.7 percent okay let's plug these numbers in so square root of the relative error of the pendulum mass so it's going to be 0 0.067 squared plus the foam dart that's 0.167 squared 
plus, here I need a parentheses because I need to do one half, so 0.5 times the relative error for the length, so that was the 0.018, close parentheses, and square then, plus, oh, I just noticed that I have an additional plus in the formula here, that's, that's just a typo, so plus parentheses and again, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 times 2, of course it's 1, but I put them in here so you can see they didn't just vanish. I mean, they do mathematically, but you can compare this one here to this one here. And again, the 1 half comes from the square root. The 2 here comes from me analyzing that if we do this without calculus for the cosine, then it comes out that we should double that angle error here and therefore are able to avoid dealing with the error inside the cosine. Okay, so that's that's where the 2 came from and then of course 0 0.5 times 2 times that error which is the 0 0.077 rounded, close that square, close the square, uh, close the parentheses for the square root, hit enter and I come up with an error of 19.6%, which in my ex and as you can see in my Excel sheet, that's the same thing that Excel calculated for me. The velocity then here from um, is being calculated as it was in the lab. 15 plus 1.5 divided by 1.5 times the square root of 2 times, and I have to be careful, oh yeah, I'm, I am in centimeters, so 982 centimeters per second squared, times the length, which is 55, times parentheses 1 minus cosine of 13 degrees, and then I close the parentheses on the cosine, the parentheses around the cosine and the parentheses on the square root and before I hit enter I'm gonna check the mode if I am in degrees I am okay and then I hit enter and I come up with a result of 579 centimeters per second is the speed and I multiply that with my error of 0.196 relatively large error so it's plus minus 113 centimeters per second. That's my error on the ballistic pendulum.